Ed's getting his gear on. in the middle James to, 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 uh, to level the boat out. What? <laughs> That's better. he goes so just playing the waiting game now while uh, Ed's diving it that's a new uh, sark boat so I've been on that we went for a sark trip earlier on in the year and there's Jason there from inshore fishing doing his pots for the look of it a fair bit of uh, northeasterly wind coming along here so we're getting pushed along but we're just keeping an eye on Ed who's down here making sure there's no boats coming near him. And I'll bring you back when we find out what was uh, hooking them up. out the uh, string and his uh, dive bag so he's just he's just going off to do some scalloping we've got these two pots which he's kindly recovered I'm gonna bait them up and we're gonna go and chuck them out okay so apologies for the wind noise again so Ed's just coming up now it's probably been down for a good 20 25 minutes I suppose James is just gonna steer the boat up to it feels weird for me to be uh, almost a passenger in my own boat, but it's quite nice actually. The wind, eh, James? Absolutely bang on. So it's just come up. He's got a nice uh, few scallops for his tea. So he's going to start, James is going to start cleaning them through. There's other claws in there somewhere. <laughs> so what was he in it? A tyre. He was in a tyre. A little, not a lorry tyre. So this is Fermain Bay. Uh, they used to run a ferry service years ago here, but uh, that all got stopped. And you can't drive down here, you've got to walk, I think. Another boat just here. Okay, so Ed's, we just counted up. Uh, how many Ed's had and he's had 87 scallops on his first dive so he's quite happy with that and a lobster so we're now just bobbing around in Fur Main that boat's just going Ed's got to be out of the water for 45 minutes to an hour and then he's gonna get his second dive so we're hoping he can get the magic number of 100 Is. James 
James is just feeding out his dive bag to him. Okay, so you can just see Ed walking off there. He's, uh, he's done his deeds for the day. James has kindly shocking all these scallops for Ed. So he had 131 scallops over the two dives, so pretty good. This is the gauge that James is using. So anything of these in between these and that is eagle. So he's measuring them all and he's shocking them. You can see there he started. That's the lobster we had. Um, and yeah, this is how he's doing it. So he's, he's cutting the back of the scallop there, taking it out of the thing and you're left with the row and the scallop. And then the frills there, we're using them into the bucket and we're gonna reuse them as bream bait. Okay, so I thought I'd give you just a run through of the uh, rod and reel I'm using today. So this is a Shakespeare Sigma bass rod, it's 11 foot 6. And I am using Pen Pursuit uh, 6000 spool reel. And I'm using two of those tonight. I'll give you a run through of the other rods when we get it set up. These are the, gonna be the Paternoster rigs I'm using. So they're pre-made, 60 pound mainline, 25 pound memory free snood and 2.0 bait holder hooks with some attractor beads as well. The bait I'm going to be using is, as I said to you, lovely ragworm, absolutely fine bait. Hopefully we can pick up a red mullet or something like that. Um, as I say, I'm only doing the bait fishing today just to uh, have an extra couple of rods in the water. It's predominantly today's to go for the squid. So I'm just waiting for the darkness to settle a bit. As you can see, there's an activity of life here. You've got the Commodore Clipper, which is our freight boat coming in. He's just docked up. By the look of that, that's the Brecky boat, I think. And there's a pilot boat coming in here. Some Peterport Lighthouse is just there. Boatworks Plus, which is a boat um, chandlery place, and they do sort of rigging and boat repairs and stuff like that. Easy fishing tonight, straight up the back of the van. High water tonight is at six o'clock and it's an 8.8 .8 meter. Here you are, there's something a bit different. Hopefully you can pick this up on the camera. What they're doing is actually putting that yacht back into the water. So you can see the whole, the whole cable, it all comes down on cables. This here is a Sark Venture, it's a Sark boat. There's another boat here just about to come out. Obviously he's off fishing. Little West Pilot 4, I think. Westport Pilot 4. Okay, so that's both rods now baited up. So obviously the, I'm using those Paternoster rigs. So they're both baited up, lovely load of beads, fine ragworm on both hooks. Um, exactly the same, the other rod I'll go through, which is a Penn Squadron 3, uh, uh, Squadron 2, sorry. It's a bass rod. Again, my choice of reels, um, fixed spool off the shore, Penn Pursuit 6000, loaded up with 25 pound mono line and it's going down to a clips main line to the clips clip swivel can't get my words out and obviously straight onto those there so i'm going to get these out and then i'm going to get the squid rod set up the lights are just turned on so darkness is old twilight is fast approaching us which is good so another thing i'm going to be using tonight is the old bells um, as it gets dark, I prefer them to uh, the actual rod lights. Just clip them on the edge of the top, tip of the rush. Be careful not to drop them in as well. 
Beautiful. So that's both bottom rods out on there. So one's just out here, down close, and the other one's straight up there, out far. Well, guys, you're not going to believe this, but I didn't even get a chance to get the rod, at, uh, the camera on. Beauty of a red mullet. Just absolutely smashed. The rod went over, and I didn't have a chance to get it. That is first cast. I'm well happy with that. So guys, this is probably one of the biggest uh, commercial boats that comes into the island, Sarah P. Fine vessel, probably when they're potting, I suppose, crab pots. Coming back in for the evening. That red mullet is absolutely, the rod was bent. So guys, just for the float set up, this is how I do it. Bead, 25 gram float, bead, one ounce bead, uh, ball weight, bead, down to a swivel, down to a five foot trace, down to my squid jig, and I'm gonna just set the depth and then we'll be ready to cast out. All right guys, so, I don't know if you can see, but just down here, there's a little orange float, whether or not it's picking that up, hopefully, but that's the squid rod out, uh, the squid float out jig. So this is the usual pen regiment tool I'm using, and I think you probably can see a bit of a pattern with how good I think these reels are. Another pen pursuit. Now uh, this is a 4000, this is actually my bass law rod really. Uh, well, we haven't had anything, anything more yet guys. No squid yet, uh, 45 minutes till high water. I'd expect to see them probably on the drop in tide. Uh, and this one has had all its bait stripped, so. Okay, well, what we'll do, what we're waiting for, um, while we're fishing, I'll just go through a view. I'm actually using some of this holy mackerel um, as well on the squid jigs. Um, this is one of the squid jigs I've been using, which is just a uh, orange, I think it's 3.5 gram maybe, they don't weigh very much. Um, and I'm using a half inch, uh, half ounce ball weights. I use this stuff here because I think it gives off a scent in the water. And occasionally I will um, sometimes get some small sand eels and then I elasticate them and put them round the actual squid jig if you like. Um, nothing's worked yet so far tonight but it's still early doors so I'll bring you back. Bait's gone, so we ain't gonna catch anything with that. There's nothing there, so it's probably why we haven't been getting bites. So I'm gonna load this up. Give some nice rag work. One. Beauty that one. What a beast. So what I do is I squeeze up by the pincers. Quick squeeze so that the pincers open up. Like so, and feed them on the hook. These are quite nice long shank hooks, so you can get quite a bit of the worm onto them. There we go. You gotta watch these because they can pinch you as well. They do. Their little pincers come out like that, and then they grab hook you in, and it bloody hurts. 
little cast and there we go lovely tail on it okay i'll get this casted out you probably see it whistling past the camera there we go like that Just as I cast it out, I had a couple of taps on this one. Bites are back, guys. Sean, guys. When it stops spinning, there we go, guys. Second red mullet of the night. What a beauty. Let me just turn the old light down a bit. Look at that. Fine fish. So we got one in there and number two. Amazing, what a target is, and we've caught, so that's great. Hey guys, well, welcome back to Bailey Bit Fishing. I'm Neil, and tonight we're going to be going shore fishing. So, I came down the other night and I had two lovely red mullet. I've just been out done the parts, it was getting pretty dark. Um, but yeah, now I thought we'd give the shore fishing a go. So, the bait I'm using tonight is going to be some fantastic ragworm. Okay, so I thought I'd give you a run through of all the gear I'm going to be using tonight. So this is the head torch I'm using. It's called Coast. I think it's about 400 lumens. Um, it's fully rechargeable. There is a battery in there, but it's a rechargeable battery. Um, so all you do is a little USB plug in just here. So that's that we're using. Um, right, guys. So this is what I'm using tonight. 25 gram float half ounce or a bead half ounce uh, ball weight down to a swivel down to about a four foot trace with a i'm going to start with a green uh, squid jig i've set my float depth to about oh i don't know 20 foot so far so what i'm going to do is i'm going to pop you down on here just like that i'm just going to give this a little flick out that's all i'm doing Turn that off. So that's the squid rod out now. Um, just gonna just gonna leave it there. Um, it's right under a light. There's a light. I don't know if you can see, but just above me. And Okay, so it's gonna be the same as last night. The two hooks. Get ourselves a nice juicy ragworm. Just remember guys, if you're holding these, watch it here. As I said in yesterday's video, they've got two pincers and they'll have you. So all I do is Wait for it to open its pincers, and as it goes to swallow, slide on the ragworm, just like so. Beautiful. These attractor beads really do look good on the bottom. I always tend to leave a bit of a tail if I can on these 
ragworm, although that wasn't a very big bit, just for it to flap in the tide, for it to start wriggling like that. So I'm gonna get this one casted out. We're not gonna go very far with this one. And again, like last night, we're gonna use the bells. When it's dark, I prefer these than the actual rod, um, rod lights. So, let's just get that tightened up. Just like so, we'll get the other one out. Like all true fishermen, as you can see, turn my head like, like that. All true fishermen, when your rods are out, it's time for a cup of coffee. And this is usually, just as you're pouring this, when you get the bites. Beautiful. Okay, so first bites of the night, rod's been down five minutes. This one just here. Few little taps. There we go again. Fish on, guys. Oh, five minutes and we've got fish on. What is it though? Is it the red mullet? It doesn't feel too big. Oh, a bit of a dive there. It's a nice bream, I think. And there we go. Oh, nearly knocked the camera over. First fish of the night, guys. And a lovely little bream. There you go. Lovely hook up through the top of the snout. Beautiful little fish. He's gonna go back. We don't want him. That's a great start though. Give you one show of him yet, when I can get hold of him nicely. He's just jumping around in the van at the moment. There we go. Fine little bream. Back he goes. And he's gone. Beautiful. Well, may that continue. Blue lights down there, guys. I don't know what's going on. That's uh, the harbour office there, or the harbour um, terminal. God knows. Okay guys, I've just got the last one in. Thanks very much for watching uh, these episodes. I'm um, going to call it a night now. So we've had that one bream. Uh, I had a couple of shore crabs, which was inevitable it's going to happen uh, and I think they're probably uh, getting to the bait just as quick as the fish are. I see the wind's just picked up and I've noticed that there's a bit, a bit of a chop in the water. Um, you probably hear it on the camera. Again no squid tonight. You can see there's been some squid here though. There's ink everywhere. Um, but uh, no not for us tonight. Tides are getting smaller now as well so that doesn't help. But anyway We've had two trips and we've caught them both, so you can't beat that. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this, please like and subscribe. It's free, it doesn't cost anything, and uh, I hope to hopefully bring you plenty more content to keep you all entertained. See you all next time, guys.